Welcome to the season finale of Behind the Syllabus. It's been a long road coming. I'm your host, as usual, Jordan Franklin. Today we go out to the farm and into the classroom with biology professor, Dr. John Keane. Let's go. My parents are John and Jan Keene. Uh, I was born in 1974 in Hartwell, Nebraska. I've made it really far. I live eight miles from where I grew up. I grew up at a family farm. I'm actually the fourth generation of John Keene. So my great grandpa was John Keene and my grandpa, my dad, me. My great grandpa actually homesteaded on the same section. So just a mile away from where I grew up. Four generations of farmers in the family. And then uh, my mom was a registered nurse. I've got two older sisters, uh, Jill Smith uh, and Julie Pavelka, and one younger brother, Joel Keene. We were a farm family in the 80s, we didn't do a lot of fun. I say that jokingly, but you know, growing up on a family farm in the area of the late 70s, 80s, early 90s, fun was being together as a family, but we really did work, work very, very hard. I'm very proud to say that my parents are very much self-made people. They worked very hard. My dad started out with a, a quarter and a tractor when uh, he and my mom got married. And so really, you know, growing up, we did chores in the morning before school. We did chores when we got home. We raised pigs and cattle and we were hired help. So uh, it, that's that was pretty much life as growing up. Elementary school was Hartwell Public Schools. Um, it's actually not operational anymore. It was just a three-room school. And actually, my kindergarten teacher moved to fourth, fifth, and sixth. So like up until I went to junior high, I'd had two teachers in my entire life, Mildred Carr and Marion Bendrup. And then I went to uh, C.L. Jones Middle School in Minden, 7th and 8th grade, and then uh, Minden High, 9th through 12th. I was, I was a little kid in high school, I was a farm kid. I, I have to admit, in high school I was probably about the biggest nerd you can imagine. Some of my friends from high school, uh, Kirk Favinger, Chris Peterson, were close friends that I hung out with. My dentist now is actually uh, was a high school friend, Chris Berkestrand. Working with horses actually was my thing. I mean, I was the kid who, it was all about horses for me. Um, I, uh, I was horse crazy from the time I can remember, so, you know, uh, livestock and horses, that was just my thing. I mean, I had a great childhood. We were supervised, but yet we were unsupervised. It was, it was farm life. We drove before we could do anything else. It was just a very different time um, as, far as, as far as how we grew up. Dr. Keene had a great family life, but could he leave it all behind to go to Colorado for college? Um, as far as my undergraduate experience, I went actually to Hastings College. I was the first male in my, my generation of family to even get an undergraduate degree. I was originally going to go to Colorado State University and do my pre-veterinary requirements there. And it just so happened that the speech coach at the time, the, the head of the forensics program, Kevin Heinemann, uh, recruited me pretty heavily. I kind of decided last minute my senior year that I wanted to go to Hastings College. It was awfully close to home. I, I really felt a, a strong sense of commitment to, to Kevin and his program and it was probably one of the best decisions I ever made. I came in uh, to Hastings College as a biology major and that was my, my major focus all the way through. I never did change my major. Oh, my friends here. Wow, I'm going to incriminate a number of them. To even come up with a friend list would be difficult. It, it was, I, I really loved Hastings College and had friends in, in all areas. Some, some names which people around Hastings College will still know as familiar were some of my partners in crime and, and many things. Holly Sabatka, Smeeds, as she was at the time. Alicia O'Donnell is back and around now. We were all content contemporaries and uh, involved in SA and, and did a lot together in and out of the classroom. I guess I had a lot of a lot of fun stuff in college. As far as anything, you know, right off the top of my head that is repeatable. Um, whew. Uh, you know, I, I guess uh, I don't want to say that I was, I certainly wasn't bad, but uh, you know, I was I was a kid. I was 18 to 22. You know, we were we were big on pranks in that era. Pouring flour on paper and sliding under someone's dorm room door and filling people's cars with packing peanuts. We were much much more of a community. The big thing, I guess, our day revolved around meal time. There wasn't as many people that lived off campus. The apartments didn't exist, and so all 900 to 1,000 students essentially were in the cafeteria. Dinner was a big part of our our social interaction and our social activity. And 
Uh, it was like Homecoming King, so uh, the Homecoming. You were the Homecoming King? Yeah, it was Homecoming you King. Tell me about that a uh, I was Homecoming King in fall of 94, would have been my junior year. Obviously, I was part of uh, the forensics team for several years, and that was a big part of my life. Very involved in, in peer education. 5 Student Health Advisory, was one of the founding people of CARE. Very involved in SA and all aspects of SA. I was, you know, entertainment chair. Holly Smedra and Asabaka and Alicia O'Donnell were SA president and vice president, and I always joked that I installed them as, as, so I could run a puppet regime from behind the scenes. <laughs> It's hard to say. I had I had a favorite I had favorite sets of classes, but they were very different. I love Charles Springer's, who is a, a biology prof, who I guess is the prof who I pretty much ripped off my entire professional persona from. Any class I took with him, they were they were incredibly challenging and very hard, but they were so much fun and dynamic. I mean, he was just a character. It's also kind of interesting because I'm uh, I'm colleagues now with a number of people who I had classes with, and I still find myself doing things that they do and picking up on and, and learning from them. So yeah, they were all, there were a lot of people who had great influences on me. Um, and I graduated in May of 96, and then I did my doctorate of veterinary medicine at Kansas State University, and I graduated there in May of 2000. If you're not aware by now, Dr. Keen actually owns his own farm, so let's go on a field trip. If the cat crawls in your bag, you have to take it home. We'll just take off in the gator and uh, let's see where might be interesting we can go. He thinks he's tough stuff. Uh, he's pretty tough. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. Huh. This is Casey and uh, her little guy, Snap, we're calling in. So he was just born. He is five days old. Uh, pretty, pretty good sized little guy. I know it seems small, but uh, for a foal, he was he was a big one. Uh, born about ten o'clock at night. Wow. Cute little booger. Oh, yeah. uh, needed a little help getting started nursing, so. Uh, he got handled a lot in his first couple hours of life. Um, aren't you, little guy? They do that kind of chewing thing as a like learning behavior when they're handled. This little gal, who is as of yet nameless, come here. Come here, little gal. She's a little more standoffish. Come on. Come here. Come here. Here you go. Hey, there we are. There we are. Mm hmm. What you think? Huh? What you think? Hmm? So, yep, she's just a week old today. So, seven days. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Mom's a little bit of a, she's a nibbler. So, anytime you scratch her, she's got to nibble somebody. So, she thinks she's going to, she's like, hey, mom, they're filming. It's embarrassing. Cruise on out and take a look at some cows and calves. babies, which um, I calved earlier this year. I have thousands of dollars worth of frozen semen and I synchronize them so I, I bring them all together and put their estrus together and then I actually inseminate them with the frozen semen. Mm -hmm. yes. Dr. Keen wakes up daily at 6.30 for farm work. He also is a veterinarian, so how does he find time to teach? I am an associate professor of biology. After I graduated with my veterinary degree, I actually started as an associate at a practice here in Hastings, and I was a veterinary practitioner. I was in that practice till 2002. I opened my own practice, Keen Animal Health, and I actually still operate the practice today until I was uh, employed here on full-time faculty. As far as being a veterinarian, from the time I can remember, that's all I ever wanted to be. I was the 
kid, he was dissecting roadkill. We'd get a pig or something with a laceration and my mom would sit there patiently with me while I was a needle and thread and sewed it up. I can't honestly remember a point in time in my life where I didn't want to be a veterinarian. I never thought about teaching, so I guess I can't think of anything that really inspired me other than my mom was kind of a born teacher. She was in healthcare, she was a nurse, but you know, she taught nurses aid and CSM classes and stuff. So I guess maybe somewhere in the background and in the background of my life, there was this kind of thing about maybe, you know, being in education. The biggest factor in my, in my job transition was just I was no longer going to be able to do both practice and being an adjunct and I had to make a decision. I started here full time in the fall of 04. Prior to that I taught uh, just one class as an adjunct every year. I distinctly remember my first exam. I actually had people weeping. Um, I hadn't ever written a 100 level anatomy exam before. I mean you know in my last four years have been at the doctoral level anatomy and physiology and you know I literally had a kid who broke out in tears and really? yeah and I was like okay we, we need to retool <laughs> obviously I, I took it a little bit too hard and too difficult on that one I do remember my when the day I was I was hired full-time I got an email from Rich Lloyd and I still have it to this day and the subject line said let's roll here on campus my primary responsibilities are obviously my role in the biology classroom um, in addition to the biology classes I teach I also teach three of the courses that are part of the exercise science major so so um, I see a lot of those students also. But this will be the end of my ninth year full time. The favorite part of the job is just being in the classroom. I absolutely love uh, the dynamic interaction with the students. I love being in front of a classroom. I love uh, getting to meet and know the students. So that 50 minute period is, is what brings me here to the job and that's why I do it. Uh, meetings, just absolutely hate meetings. Uh, not, not at all something I have a lot of patience for and so. If you would have asked me when I was an undergraduate or all the way through my veterinary training or even when I first came back here, and if you would have said, hey, guess what, uh, in 2013 you're going to be an associate professor of biology finishing up your ninth year and going on sabbatical, uh, I probably would have laughed at you. I, I can honestly say I don't see myself here for 30 years. Famous last words. I never intended to be a professor. I've stayed because I enjoy the students and I have a great job and a great life. Every passing year I realize that I'm, there's a year more separating me from the students and a year less that I understand. And the moment I don't feel like I'm 100% effective in the classroom anymore, then, then I will move on. I don't see myself moving elsewhere in academia, I will say that. You know, I, I'm going on sabbatical in the fall and so I'm, I'm making my list of places I want to go. I mean, I love travel. Um, you know, I've taken students to India, to Tanzania, to Uganda. I spent time in extensively in Thailand and in Peru, um, hiking in the Andes. And so, you know, as far as my future, uh, my list of places I want to go is incredibly long. Um, you know. Thanks for watching Behind the Syllabus. Hope you've enjoyed every episode. If you'd like to watch any of the previous episodes, all you have to do is go to YouTube and enter Behind the Syllabus, or go to www.behindthesyllabus.wordpress.com, or follow the link below. Stay classy, Hastings. Hey, you should go watch it.